So our project was called Beyond School, New Interoperability Standards on Flood, that's Elias. Um, Elias wasn't actually on the program, but um, his involvement has been significant. He basically developed everything, so I couldn't exclude him from the presentation. Um, so uh, thanks, Elias. Okay, so um, hopefully this is not going to be death by uh, acronyms. Um, but I might just explain a little bit about SCORM for those of you that don't know. Does, does anybody want an explanation of SCORM? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, just, just briefly, basically SCORM is the share, shareable content object reference model. It's a way of packaging learning content and it provides tracking. That's a quick summary. So basically we're looking at uh, two technologies that uh, are newer than SCORM. Um, one um, was called Experience API and the other one's called Bionis LTI. So the objectives of the trials, the trial, was to explore those two technologies, to understand the requirements for their use, and assess the value. And um, our trial was, um, we worked with uh, the Built Environment degree programs at Homes Plan, and they came up with this idea of an activity that we could apply these technologies to. Um, the activity was based around uh, a cost estimation activity where it's a construction project over Ten months, and for each month you put in cost estimates for various cost items. For example, like site ex uh, excavation or foundations, or foundations, that sort of thing. So, two activities were based around that press, um, and we trialled with students from that area. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about both of the technologies. So, Experience API, um, and for short, X API, has the also been previously known as Tin Can API and it came out of a Tin Can project. So you may have heard Brian earlier um, today mention Tin Can. Um, and it's considered the next generation of SCORM, so it's, it's overlooked by the same organisation. Um, basically what it does is it tracks learning activities as an activity stream and it does that using an active verb object statement. So um, the actor might be Jeff, Jeff the learner. Um, a verb completed and an object OHS training. So that's the basic uh, structure of the statements. Um, what the uh, specification does is it, it defines how that information is um, uh, sent and that information is sent to what they call a learning record store, um, which um, is an LRS. And that's basically a repository for storing those statements, retrieving them, and potentially filtering them as well. And in, in short, you can describe um, XAPI as a, a messaging system. It basically sends messages. It's not necessarily about um, packaging the content or um, structuring the content in, in a particular way. It's about the messages that that content sends so that you can look at the learning activities that have happened. Um, so when we started the trial, the version of the uh, specification was at Point 0.9, so it was a public draft. Um, during the project, it actually went to point 0.15, which was just a little bit of grief. Um, and it finally became a, um, a full version one in April this year. So it's very, very new, um, and that's part of its problems, if you like. Okay, IMS LTI. Um, LTI stands for Learning Tools Interoperability. Um, comes from the same organisation that developed IMS content packaging, which is a part of SCORM, so there's kind of a relationship there as well. Um, and basically what it's about is the inter interoperability of external tools and systems. So it's about using an external tool with something like Moodle or Blackboard, without necessarily having to import that tool into the actual LMS system. And in terms of the terminology that IMS LTI uses, they call um, an LMS, a tool consumer, um, the actual activity will be a tool <coughs> and the system that provides that tool is the tool provider. So, um, maybe just one. Okay, this is a diagram of our implementation and I'm going to hand over to Elias um, where he can speak about how we went about implementing the uh, Experience API in the LMS trial. So as, as Vlad mentioned earlier, uh, every uh, XAPI uh, statement requires a uh, actor, a verb, and an object. And the statement needs to be submitted to somewhere online, which is a learning record store. 
to do that, we use the uh, SCORM Cloud, which is a free, uh, free system that you just uh, register to and you submit your, your statements to. Uh, uh, to uh, we use the um, uh, iOS, uh, we've developed an iOS app to handle the, those requests, submit the submission of requests to that uh, learning record store. Uh, and that we use the float library to help us uh, kind of formalize those uh, statements of the verb, actor, and, uh, and object. Uh, we, uh, we also used uh, Moodle to authenticate users to make sure the users are uh, authentic. Um, that, um, we had we, we, we had to we had few options in in making sure on, in authenticating users, Facebook and Twitter apps. But that requires the apps to be installed on the uh, student devices and require them to be able to log in and then uh, use their information, give us permission to use their information, which which also meant that uh, devices can be used only by one student and they can't be passed around to other students. So that's why. We used uh, Moodle to uh, authenticate. Um, I think that that covered that covers everything. Yeah. So um, Scorn Cloud is a, a service that um, is free, but they do have um, they offer other services apart from LRS. You can upload your content into there, that sort of thing. It's sort of not quite an LMS. Um, but it's worth having a look at if you've got other content and you don't want to use an LMS. You can upload it into there. So the screen basically your home screen. It's got um, information about cash flow, which is a bit of underpinning knowledge. Um, you read the scenario, which tells you what you're actually doing. So you're, you're costing um, a 10 month project to, to build a two story building. The third button there is the estimate cash flow um, entry point, which takes you to a screen like this one, which lists all the actual cost items that um, students need to enter. Um, so at the moment we've got zero totals, but if you click on the actual arrow next to it, you get the input screen where you can enter all that data. Um, after estimate cash flow, we've got preview and submit estimates. So what happens there is um, you get to have a look at a plot of your data and have a look at the graph and say, yeah, I think that looks how it should. Um, and you can then submit it, which will submit that data to the learning record store using TIPCAN API statements. Um, the final button was actually an interesting addition. Um, once you've submitted your data, you can actually go into view, groups, uh, view group results and it will show you data, which is fantastic, but it will also pull in all the other students' graphs as well. So, um, if we jump to the next screen, five minutes. Um, so that's the input screen. Um, nothing too exciting there. Save your results. Once you submit it, you get to see a view group, uh, a group result like that. So the red line there, the dotted red line is your results, and the others are the other students. Which is really good in a classroom, particularly when we trialled it. Um, students um, like being able to compare and discuss why you know, people's graphs are different. Um, and there's a few arguments and that sort of thing. So um, as you can see, uh, that the, the IMS LTI uh, concept doesn't look as uh, uh, as messy or complicated as the uh, XAPI. It's just got two variables uh, called tool consumer and a tool provider. So uh, we created the tool provider in uh, in PHP, which is based on the same uh, concept of the of the mobile app uh, to enter the cash flow estimates. Uh, once the student uh, Finishes the uh, the activity, they can submit a progress report, which is then then saved into the Moodle gradebook. Uh, the good thing about a tool provider is it can be written in any uh, in any language. It doesn't have to be on the uh, PHP. We tried we looked at called Fusion, but we decided to use PHP. Uh, then uh, once your tool uh, tool provider is ready, or you've developed the tool, or you've consulted the tool provider to give you access to the tool. You go to Moodle, in other case we used Moodle 2.3 and it's got a, an activity type called external tool. Uh, you uh, embed your, your developed tool into the Moodle external tool given uh, being supplied a key and a secret from your provider and you launch it. Students won't know the, won't know the difference if it's been launched from Moodle or from another 
another source. Uh, so that concept made it a lot easier easier to use. Um, and let's see. Okay, this is just some screenshots of the IMS LTI tool. And as I was just said, it's basically the same concept, entering the data. Um, given it was built for a web browser, we could fit a lot more input screens, uh, input fields onto the one screen. So we actually didn't break it up the same way we uh, did with the IOS app, because that was built for a phone. Um, so again, you fill in all your data and you know, adapt, adapt, that's everywhere. You submit your progress and that pushes a grade into the grade. Um, and again, it does the same sort of thing. It plots a graph and you can see how it's plotted that one particular that one shows it. Okay, just to summarize Experience API. Um, the, one of the key benefits and why they say um, uh, XAPI is uh, the next generation of SCORE is because it's not confined in the same way that SCORE is. Um, if you're not dependent on a browser, you can use new technologies like um, a browser, uh, sorry, like a mobile app as we do. Um, the other example that you might see floating around is talking about a, a CPR dump. So a CPR dump could be connected to the internet and it could see XAPI statements to the address. So you're no longer confined to a browser. Um, the active verb object structure is really flexible. The specification doesn't say what you, what terms you have to use. Um, so you're free to sort of adapt that. Um, you can retrieve delete process statements from the learning record store. You don't need an LRS, but you, uh, an LMS, but you do need an LRS. Um, the support is now growing, and, and now that it's a version one, I think we'll see a bit of a uh, takeoff of it. Um, and, and I think it provides opportunities for more detailed tracking and score um, too. So simulations and um, uh, games can be better tracked, possibly using statements that you said you wanted to be sent. Um, cons, uh, at the moment, a lot of the cons are to do with the fact that it's just new and the technology is technology in its infancy. So lack of LMS integration, there are a few LRSs around, there are some development tools around. Articulate's one that talks about Tin Can API and output into that. We haven't really looked at that in detail, but they do talk of it. And the other question is about how to process a, a stream of statements um, into some sort of reporting. So we need to look at the detail of that, but from we pull that data in and generate a graph. So that's the summary of that one. If you go to now. Um, <laughs> Okay, the pros of IMS LTI, um, you can add, add functionality to a, a system without actually adding plugins, which is often a problem with things like Moodle, for example, because in the upgrade path is really complicated. If you can just pull in a functionality in an interoperable way, you're not affecting the actual system. Um, it eliminates the need to import content, so you can have a single source of it and share it around. Um, you know, 50, 100 LMSs all pointing to this one bit of content. Um, access is seamless for students, so uh, you don't have to log in. Um, IMS LTI takes care of that process for you. And basically, we look at it as supporting interoperability of service like technologies. Uh, cons, you need to find somebody to host the tools, um, unless you purchase them from someone who's already hosting them for you. Um, you either need to source the tools or create them, so um, they're more complicated than our. The resource and a, a, a small contact, contact package. Um, the tools may not look the same as the tool consumer because they're an external tool and they might just look different. And um, they can push data into the tool uh, consumer into the gradebook, but they're actually not really about tracking what's happening within the tool. So in a sense, it's actually actually IMSLTI is quite different to TK API in terms of what they're trying to achieve. 